In this video, we're going to be investigating uh, y equals r shine of x, which is the inverse shine of x. Now, you might be wondering, well, OK, well, why is there no c in there? Because we're used to using arc sine of x. Uh, well, that's because arc sine of x is talking about an arc. It's talking about the length of an arc of a circle. Whereas our shine of x is actually looking at an area, and hence you've got a r for area in front of it. It's looking at the area uh, between the rectangular hyperbola and the origin. You can, uh, if you Google it, you'll be able to see some images of it, so you can kind of see where the difference lies. And that's why we don't have the c there. So let's first of all think about what this. Uh, function must look like. So let's draw some axes. Okay, let's draw on y equals x because we know that the function and its inverse must be reflections of each other in y equals x. So, uh, shine, y equals shine x is going to look something like this. And so its inverse function must be a reflection of that. Um, so something like, it's, it's not very easy to draw. Okay, like that. Now, so this would be y equals shine of x, and this is y equals r shine of x. Okay, so um, let's think about domain range then. Now, the domain of r shine of x should match the range of shine of x, which is all real values. So that means that the domain of the inverse function must be x, such that x belongs to the real numbers. And the range of r shine uh, must be the same as the domain of y equals shine x. Now, the domain of y equals shine x was all real values. It allowed all real values in. So that means the range of the inverse function must be all real values. Now, it looks kind of like it's going to start plateauing. But just like uh, y equals log x, it continues to increase, but slower and slower and slower. OK, so this is what y equals r shine of x looks like. And here is its domain and range.